Hi, I'm Rajneesh. And I'm Bridget. Welcome to Terra Science, the podcast where reality matters. It's a pleasure to have Mr. Benjamin Cantu with me today. He's the mayor of Mantica. Mantica is a city uh, with about 84,000 people who live here. It's in the Central Valley. It's very centrally located. It's so about 76 miles east of uh, San Francisco. And so many people have been moving out here because uh, the housing prices are much affordable and um, it's more open and less crowded, at least for now. Uh, but there is a lot of construction and the future of Manteca, I think is very bright. Businesses want to come here. People want to come here. Schools are great. And of course, it's election season. So uh, we have Mr. Benjamin Cantu, and uh, welcome to Terra Science. Thank you. Thank you, Rashish, for the invitation. So uh, we'll get started. I would just like uh, us to know, how did you become the mayor? Just a little bit of your journey and, and you know, just your experience before we get started. Okay. Uh, well, let me give you a little background on myself. Um, my, as you noted, uh, Ben Cantu, I've lived in uh, Manteca uh, essentially all my life. My family moved here when I was uh, two or three years old. Uh, I'm now 71, and uh, I've seen uh, Manteca grow from 6,000 people to almost 90,000 people in my lifetime. Uh, the community... Uh, is essentially started as, as a farm town uh, with uh, a bunch of dairies here and the uh, railroad would uh, uh, stop and pick up the milk canisters uh, and take them to uh, the largest city that would have the, the processing plant. Uh, I attended all the schools here, graduated from Antica High in uh, 1969. Went to Delta College for two years, uh, studied uh, basically agricultural industry and um, building and architecture. And in my first quarter, I decided, you know what? I, I don't want to study agriculture. So I changed my major to uh, business law and architecture and a minor in engineering. Uh, so my goal was to be an architect. And when I graduated from Delta, I was on my way to San Luis Obispo uh, to study architecture. Uh, and that summer, I got, received a phone call from a local engineering firm that um, wanted to know if I was interested in a part-time job in their office. And I said, well, I'm, I'm only here for the summer. Uh, but sure, I'd like to come in. So they conducted an interview. And uh, the next morning, I get a call from the city of Manteca. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to know if I was interested in uh, joining their brand new planning office. Uh, and I indicated again, I'm on my way to San Luis Obispo at the end of the summer. And they said, it's okay, it's a part time job. So uh, I went in, I became part of the department and uh, I stayed for 34 years. Wow. <laughs> Never yeah. made it to San Luis Obispo. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, I, did, I did receive a, uh, a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of San Francisco uh, wow. over time. Uh, so uh, I started as the planning aide in the department, which is the lowest rung on the ladder. And by the time I finished, I was managing the department. Uh, That's and great. Yeah. I retired in 2006 and decided the community had a, a number of ch challenges. And since I had a great deal of experience, I decided I would take the challenge on and fix the problems. And here we are. Yeah, no, no, that, that's great. And. Uh, you've been uh, the mayor since the last election. Of the yes, city. Uh, four years now. Four years, yes. 
No, that that's great. Uh, there is, like we discussed earlier, there is a lot of potential here. Uh, many people are moving uh, into Manteca. So, um, you know, and, and a little small um, thing about Manteca, it was originally named Montica. Yes. But then the railway station uh, was printing tickets and they printed Manteca because the Manteca, the word uh, in Spanish meant lard. <laughs> so uh, since then, the city has been uh, Manteca. Uh, and now people are moving in here uh, mainly because of the Bay Area and people can work more remotely so they can live a bit farther away. And uh, so what, are, what is your vision in the next uh, you know, four years or so uh, for Manteca? Well, um, as I noted previously, I ran uh, for mayor in order to uh, correct a bunch of challenges that uh, the community was experiencing. And th those were problems and issues that had been developing over a period of decades. Uh, so when I was elected four years ago, I started a process of change at City Hall uh, and a change in the mindset of the leadership at that point and uh, organization and the focus of where Mantique was going to go in, into the future. Uh, we're growing from uh, a mindset of small farm town uh, to a small city. Uh, we should be at uh, 100 population probably in the next five years. Um, yeah. and, uh, I think that it's time for the community uh, to begin the change, a transition to a small city. We have a lot of uh, amenities of a city of this size that we do not have. And there's no, uh, there does not seem to be any progress at City Hall to achieve those amenities over a period of time. So my next four years uh, will be to implement the changes that I started my first four years. And uh, I'm hoping that by the end of those four years, the next four years, that we will have achieved uh, a lot of those amenities and that we've established a, a financial foundation that the city can continue to be a sustainable community into the future. You know, that, that's great. And you know, uh, I have been moving towards Manteca from the Bay Area and uh, especially my time in uh, Livermore uh, was during the early growth of Livermore. And you know, one of the big things that were happening in Livermore at that time was uh, focus on bringing businesses, but also uh, people who live there uh, having jobs within the city. You know, kind of now Livermore is trying to become more of a Silicon Valley uh, yeah. of <laughs> there. Right. So uh, I think the same way, uh, the growth in Manteca, I think that there are people who move here and initially they may move here and um, maintain some jobs uh, in the Bay Area, which is not too far away. But again, in the future, um, you know, having enough opportunities uh, within the city so people can work and live here and, and just grow. Uh, so yeah, so attracting businesses and uh, maybe even institutions um, to the city. But is the yeah. city big enough uh, for that, for that growth? Yeah, actually, uh the focus of this community for, for decades has been uh, new homes. Uh, and as a result of that, there has not been much movement at establishing a, a commerce and industrial jobs base in the community. Uh, so part of what I've been doing the first four years is beginning to transition the community uh, or from the leadership from new homes to commerce and job centers. Uh, in, order, in order to create a fiscally balanced economic in this community, you have to have a balance between homes and jobs. Uh, and in our case, it's been skewed to homes for too long. As a result, uh, 
the city doesn't generate the tax base it should in order to offset the cost of providing services to the NOHO. So that has been my goal, uh, along with changing the mindset of City Hall, is to change the focus of the community, not so much away from homes, but to create a balance with commerce and job centers. Uh, and that is part of my next four years to accomplish that. Um, if we don't, then the community is going to continue to build new homes for people moving here from the Bay Area. Uh, but what that is doing is creating a lack of affordability for, of homes for people who actually live and work here. Uh, so that's another part that I'm working on, and that's to create uh, opportunities for affordable housing for the local people. Right, and I, you're right, and it's sustainability of, of this balance uh, is really important uh, because uh, infrastructure is also, uh, you know, uh, one thing that's happening in Livermore, uh, again, when so many people are moving in and there are uh, these apartments or townhomes, and so the, the, there are so many people packed in into smaller areas. And if it's just that, the roads and the infrastructure has not changed as much. Right. So then everyone <laughs> tries to get on the same freeways uh, and it's always, it, it also causes a domino effect on traffic yeah. and people's livelihood. So, so yes, I think uh, it's really important to balance the uh, home development of homes as well as businesses. Well, the, as, uh, other... as, you, as you can experience, driving around in Manteca, we're essentially there. We, we have more traffic for roads that were designed, you know, 30 years ago, and it's congestion everywhere you go. So uh, that is something we need to work on. Yes. And, and along with this uh, growth, which is really good, you know, in, in general, growth is good for people who live here as well, more opportunity and people who come in here and make this their, their own city, their own home. Uh, but along with that, and this is one of my uh, more important topics because I'm a plant scientist, is taking care of the environment, uh, clean air and planning, you know, city planning and uh, keeping uh, like an urban forest alive, keeping trees and also understanding, uh, you know, where the water flows uh, underneath uh, because all those things matter in terms of where trees are, where parks are. So uh, what is your thought on that? Well, I, I agree with you. Uh, the urban forest is, is a big important factor in establishing a, a healthy community. And uh, the city of Manteca requires all new development to include uh, vegetation and trees within their projects. Uh, with respect to new homes, however, after a period of 10 or 12 years, the uh, residents get tired of raking leaves or the shade is in the wrong spot and they cut down a, a partially mature tree uh, and there's no replacement. So the reality is that over a period of time, the forest we were trying to create is, is slowly being depleted uh, and, and there's no movement to, to replace that. And that's one of those things that I'll be uh, dealing with in the next four years. Uh, we need to provide more urban forests in a community. It helps with the temperature of the community. Mm -hmm. It helps with the air quality. Uh, I mean, there's, there's an immense amount of benefit from an urban forest and, and people just don't see that. Uh, to them, it's a problem. Too many leaves, I can't, I can't be raking the lawn all the time. And, and uh, they just, uh, they need to be educated on why. And uh, so that'll be part of my next four years. Yes, and, and you know, just city uh, setting aside some areas uh, for developing, uh, contributing towards the urban forest also, uh, these days, there is a lot of uh, thought about having uh, fruit trees or, or kind of like an agroforest as well. And, you know, we, we are not too far from Central Valley, so we are still in a very good growing area. In fact, um, I think 
uh, Manteca is the pumpkin capital uh, of of California. Majority yeah. of the pumpkins are grown here, so right. th- there is a lot of uh, you know things that can. Uh, so we we talked about uh, two angles. One was uh, housing, another one was opportunity and jobs and businesses. But I think third one and the one that you were mentioning, you started with agriculture. Uh, because if we also pay attention to that third leg, then it uh, increases access to food and uh, you know local food. And uh, so that part is a little bit harder to develop because like you were saying, there are less incentives. So that requires a little bit more planning. Um, yes. you know, but it's important. Yeah, yeah and from, from the perspective, agriculture, we're in the center of it. We have... Right. Almonds, walnuts, grapes, uh, uh, virtually anything that that you find in other parts of the world and in this country starts right here in California, in the Central Valley. And uh, one of the things that I've always been concerned with as a land use planner, that's part of what I do, is that uh, we're drawing we're taking away from the agriculture, which is the very important to the community from a full uh, food source. Uh, as a planner, I think we need to start increasing density uh, in the community. Uh, Livermore, Pleasanton, uh, every community west of us has already gone through this. And in fact, mm-hmm. the reason they're building seven, eight story high apartment buildings right is because they've outgrown their their land area and they have to go up. Uh, So I think this community needs to start thinking about that transition. And and in doing so, uh, City Hall needs to start changing the density factor of uh, property. Uh, Our density factor has always been about uh, 25, at the top end, 25 units to the acre. Uh, you go to Pleasanton or Livermore now, and the density is up to 35 and 40 right. because right. they preserve or they've used all their land and all the choice they have is to go up. In our case, we can get ahead of the game. Uh, yes, we have thousands of acres around us we could spread out, but that's that's not what we should be focusing on. We should be focusing on preserving the agricultural land. Yes, no, it's uh, it's really important, and along with that, you know, um, recreational um, aspects as well. So people actually get to go out and enjoy uh, what the city can provide. And some of those things have not been done done that well in uh, other cities that you mentioned. So, and so I think it's it's a great of a great time here in Manteca for mm-hmm. growth and uh, if it's done the right way it can be a really uh, because it's central uh, you can go to central valley you can go to the bay area you can go skiing you can go to sacramento a lot of places are uh, easy access from here so 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 that's great um so uh, another another thing is uh, about you know as as these pressures increase uh, we see also crime and you know uh, other things start to happen with increased density uh, that you were mentioning, and th- that's another area where uh, the growth of the city needs to focus on to balance it right from the start. Uh, right. So uh, I mean, I, I yeah. any thoughts on that? Well, actually, uh, look back a couple of hundred years. Uh, the one public service that every community had was a sheriff. And that, that was the uh, priority public service of any community. And it still is today. Uh, public safety is the number one priority. It uh, takes the largest amount of our general fund budget. And that includes police and fire. Um, in Manteca's case, we've uh, grown uh, so fast that that uh, we're actually lower in the number of police officers than we should be at our, our community size. Uh, but then again, on the the other side is the reason 
we have a difficult time reaching our standard for this community size is the lack of funds, revenue. Uh, and that comes from the fact that we've always focused on new homes and not commerce jobs. And that's where the balance comes from. In order to meet the public service expectations of a community of this size, we have to have the revenue and the, and the priority is public safety. So this community is, is down about 10 police officers and uh, always has been because of the lack of proper revenue in order to provide that service. Uh, Manteca is a full service community. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we provide all the public services, when it, whether it's public safety or recreation or uh, infrastructure, uh, this community, and not very many communities do that, but this community provides a full service of all public services. Yeah, no, no, that, that's great. And to bring in that kind of revenue, uh, you know, uh, I think finding a niche uh, for what kind of market, what kind of uh, industry can Mantika attract? And uh, being close to agriculture, I think uh, uh, there are, there's a lot of tech, technology, uh, biotechnology, not necessarily the kind of biotechnology we hear about, uh, not like Bayer or Monsanto, but technology that helps farmers uh, with, uh, with their own efforts. Um, seems to be a good place for that. Also IT, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, everywhere growth, uh, most of it uh, also deliver more and there's many IT companies in the Bay Area. Uh, so how do we attract these kinds of companies or you know, uh, so to bring jobs, something that, that will really change the income level as well uh, in the city? Yeah, Mantika. Uh, no problem. Uh, Mantika has a, a great number of highly educated people living here, moving here from Silicon Valley in the Bay Area. Uh, what needs to take place is we need to develop an economic development program that both promotes the city and provides some type of incentive program to uh, help those industries either create a satellite here or move here uh, rather than having <clears throat> all our residents drive to the Bay Area to a job. Um, so that's one of the things I'll be dealing with as well in the next four years. Uh, I've kind of got that, that ball rolling already with changing some of our future land designations to commerce and industrial uh, job centers. Um, I would also like to uh, either partner with a local college like Delta or Stanislaus to create a satellite education center here that would re-educate uh, some of our population that have been uh, retired or uh, left behind because of new technology, uh, as well as, as you say, uh, labs and other things that deal with agriculture and some of the industries. Uh, there's great opportunity to do that here. And uh, I'm hoping the next four years will allow us to, to work on those things. That, that's really a good idea. I, I think uh, working with a college and creating an education and vocational, even vocational training, like you mentioned, and uh, because uh, there are efforts in other cities also, including for veterans um, to, right. to you know, help them. So well, this is great. Uh, so uh, uh, anything else you would like to add uh, to this conversation? Well, uh, let me close by saying that Manteca is a, a, a great place to live, um, raise your family. As you noted earlier, uh, we have a, an excellent school system here. Um, the great environment, lots of open space. We're only an hour away from basically every rec recreational amenity there is in, in California. Uh, Please come. We'll welcome you. Well, uh, I wish you uh, all the best uh, in the election and also in general. And uh, um, as uh, you know, I've 
we we met a couple of times and uh, i think it's it's a great city and i'm uh, glad to be a part of it and would like to see it grow and so um, all the best with the like election and also in general uh, uh, with everything else and thank you for joining us on tara science and thank you rashish uh, i had a great time thank you You've been watching Terra Science, the podcast where reality matters. We discuss food, planet, consciousness, the issues that we face and the solutions that can be offered. And we discuss with uh, wonderful guests who are leading the way in finding these solutions. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell.